Hi everyone, I am Hamid and I am going to present Packet Order Matters, improving applications performance by deliberately delaying packets. Let's start with a simple example. Assume that we have one or a set of network applications which can be routers, firewalls, load balancers or even end host applications that are running on top of Linux network stack. If I show you two different traffic patterns, where in the first one packets of different flows are interleaved randomly and in the second one packets are ordered per flow and I ask you which of these incoming traffic patterns leads to a better performance on the networking device, you will probably choose the second scenario for a variety of reasons like batch processing enhancements or based on experiences you might have in past. In this paper, we get deep into this subject and we show you that despite the correct feeling that most of us have about the benefits of packets flow level order, still the huge impact of packets order is underestimated and we show it actually worth to pay the price of reordering packets before sending them through a chain of applications and network functions. To achieve this goal, we divide the paper in three important parts. At the first part, we do a precise analysis to reveal how much and why does flow level order of packets affect the performance of network functions and applications. Then we investigate the properties of packets locality in the real world to find potentials for reordering packets. And finally, we propose a reframer as a software solution that reorders incoming packets per flow. As I show you later in our evaluation, you will see that by deploying Reframer in the network, we can achieve up to 84% improvement in terms of throughput and 26% reduction in terms of end-to-end -end tail latency. So let's start with the first step. We define a special locality factor as a parameter which determines the flow level order of packets. It is the average number of packets in the same flow that arrive back to back at a networking device. So the higher special locality factor, the higher ordering among packets. Using this parameter, we can generate a synthetic trains of packets and send the train to a server which is running a network function or application. Although the generated traffic in these experiments is very different from the real world traffic patterns, it still gives us a good understanding about the maximum benefit of ordering packets and the reason behind this benefit. As our first set of experiment, we deployed a NAT and a firewall independently on the server. In this experiment, we utilize DPDK and FastClick, so kernel network stack doesn't have impact on our measurement. In this figure, we can see by increasing a special locality factor from, from 1 to 32, the end-to-end -end latency of network functions has decreased dramatically. For instance, from 105 microseconds to 55 microseconds in the case of firewall. Similarly, if you measure the maximum throughput, you can see that by increasing SLF from 1 to 32, the throughput of the same network function has increased from 23 gigabit per second to 32 gigabit per second, which means 40% improvement. This improvement is because of fewer average cycles that CPU core should pay for processing each packet, which is shown in this figure. For instance, in the case of firewall, we see 38% reduction in average number of CPU cycles per packet. Our microscale measurement shows that by ordering packets, we actually can amortize the cost of fetching network functions related data over multiple packets. And as a result, we see a great cache utilization improvement in the system. If you look at the right figure, you can see that in both NAT and firewall cases, the average number of L1 cache misses per packet has decreased dramatically when we increase SLF. It is worth noting that this improvement is happening in the first level cache, and it clearly demonstrates the importance of L1 cache utilization in high speed networking. We can also observe the effects of ordering even on higher levels of of caches like L2 and LLC by deploying a memory intensive network function like deep packet inspectors or a chain of multiple network functions on the server. 
This experiment, along with two more that you can read on the paper, confirm that the impact of packets flow level order on the performance of network functions and applications is not negligible. But the other important question is that can we exploit this opportunity in real world and somehow reorder incoming packets? To answer this question, we analyzed our campus traffic trace to examine how unordered the traffic is in a fairly large network with heterogeneous services and, specific, and applications. To do so, we define a special distance as the packets gap between two consecutive packets of the same flow. As you can see in the figure, more than 60% of Rx packets and about 77% of Tx packets have more than one spatial distance, which means at least one packet is interleaved between two packets of the same flow. Additionally, we define temporal distance as the time between two consecutive packets of the same flow. And as you can see in, this, uh, in the second figure, the temporal distance between two consecutive packets of the same flow is usually smaller than a few tens of microseconds. Combining these two results, we convinced that there is a great chance to increase packets locality by delaying packets for only a short period of time and then reordering them per flow. According to these results, we propose reframer. Reframer is a system that leverages the idea of classifying, briefly delaying, and reordering the incoming packets in order to increase spatial locality. This system can be deployed on the point of presence of cloud data centers or in front of a network functions chain to minimize the cost of processing incoming packets in both network functions and possibly destination end hosts. In a nutshell, Reframer receives packets, classifies them in different queues, waits for a given buffering time to receive more packets of each class, and then flushes out the classes after the buffering time. It is important to determine the buffering time wisely, because increasing buffering time will increase packets' latency, and as a, as a result destroys the end to a latency benefit we expect to see and reducing that will reduce the chance of receiving multiple packets of each class. Similar to all other packet scheduling system, we encounter multiple challenges on designing Reframer. The first one is efficiency. Reframer should perform minimal number of operations per packet to be able to handle packets at high rates. Secondly, Reframer should be flexible in terms of realizing as many scheduling policies as possible. And finally, it should be scalable. It means that by increasing number of cores and instances, Reframer maximum throughput should increase almost linearly. We have addressed these challenges by using an efficient data structure and components inside the Reframer. Now let's take a look at Reframer's design in detail. Reframer maintains a hash table and a linked list within the hash table, which, which we call that flush list. Each row of the hash table maps to a queue and incoming packets are buffered in these queues. When Reframer receives the packet, it calculates the five tuple hash of incoming packet and put the packet in the related queue. If the queue already contains other packet, no more operation is needed. In case that Reframer receive a packet which maps to an empty row in the hash table, it puts the packet in the queue in, as the first step and then updates the related row with the arrival time of uh, these packets and also adds the row to the end of the flush link list. And this is all we need to do for classifying and inserting packets. To flush out packets, Reframer maintains a scheduler component which keeps track of the head of the flush list. Since this list is already sorted by the arrival time of the first packet of each queue, it takes a constant time for a scheduler to retrieve ready buffers to flush out. After receiving batch of packets, scheduler updates the hash table by removing the related rows from the flush list and also removing the arrival time records for each row. This component is able to deploy most batch level packet scheduling policies, which makes the Reframer a flexible scheduler. In the last step, before flushing out packets, 
They pass through a protocol compressor, which enables Reframer to apply multiple TCP acquiescing and similar optimizations on packets, and then it, it sends out the packets. Thanks to the hash table and the flush link list data structure, Reframer is very efficient for inserting and flushing out packets. As a last step, I share with you a part of Reframer evaluation results. We did a set of experiments to measure the effectiveness and scalability of Reframer. For saving some time, I present you a part of our measurements that answers these three questions. First, can Reframer increase the throughput of an NF chain? And if yes, how much? Second, does the benefit persist with the same amount of resources? And finally, what is the characteristics of Reframer and how scalable is it? The test, that, the test bed that we use in this part is almost similar to what we had in previous experiment. At first, we send the traffic from client to the device under test without having Reframer and measure performance indicators like end-to-end -end latency and throughput, and we call it the baseline. Then we deploy a Reframer in between the client and device under test to measure the impact of Reframer on the same metrics. Reframer can be deployed on an external server or on the same physical server with DUT, which demonstrates the benefit of Reframer without having an additional hardware resource for running Reframer. In the first experiment, we deploy Reframer on a dedicated server in between traffic generator and the device under test, which is running an NF chain containing a flow statistic tracker, a router, a firewall, and the net. In the left figure, we can see by increasing the offer load, the DUT is saturated on 32 gigabit per second rate when Reframer doesn't exist in the past, I mean the baseline case. By deploying Reframer in the network, the DUT capacity is increased to a maximum of 60 gigabit per second. Those green and red curves are cases when the reframer with various amount of buffering time is deployed in a network. For example, the red curve is when the reframer buffers packet for only 64 microseconds. Also, a similar benefit is shown in the right figure in terms of average end-to-end -end latency. You can see that the end-to-end -end latency starts to increase dramatically when the offered load reaches around 30 gigabit per second in the baseline case but the DUT can tolerate more traffic when a Reframer instance is deployed in front of it. I should mention that the latency in all experiments is measured end-to-end, -end, which means that it includes the time that packets are spent in the Reframer buffers. We did a similar experiment when Reframer is deployed on the same server with the NFJ. So this experiment shows benefits of Reframer when no additional hardware resource is added to the network. The right figure shows that the 99.9 percentile latency has improved by 26% when the Reframer is deployed in front of NF chain and buffers packet for only 64 microseconds. And at the same time, the maximum cap capacity of the server is increased by 60% uh, with the same amount of buffering time that you can see in the left figure. As the next evalu evaluation, we redid the experiment with various number of cores allocated to the Reframer. So we can measure the maximum throughput of Reframer per core and also see how it scales uh, with increasing number of CPU cores. As you can see in this graph, Reframer is able to handle up to 30 gigabit per second rate with only a single CPU core and it also scales almost linearly with increasing cores. We also show that the performance be benefit of the DUT is independent of allocated CPU cores on DUT. It means the improvement is almost the same for various number of cores and parallelism is not a restriction or an issue for that. Finally, as a conclusion, we presented three main steps of our paper. First of all, we showed you that by per flow ordering of packets, we can achieve a better performance in network functions and explain the reason behind that. 
Secondly, we discussed the possibility of reordering packets in a real network with a heterogeneous traffic by analyzing our campus trace file. And finally, we proposed a reframer as a solution with a simple and efficient design that classifies and buffers packets for a given period of time and reorders outgoing packets per flow. Our evaluation shows a reframer is able to increase the throughput of network functions chain by up to 84% and reduce the 99.9 percentile latency by around 26%. We have published the reframer code and experiments, and they are already available on GitHub if you are interested. And finally, thank you very much for listening, and I'm happy to take your questions.